is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WVAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, 3.04 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion, your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. Now, I have had this guest on before. This is one of those days where I feel like I can't say enough. His uh, site is rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com. I'll have this on my website a little later. His latest book, you know I don't do authors, uh, but I've known this guy for 20 years. I was honored to be an honorary board member on his organization, Bond. Um, His latest book is called The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. And if you're looking for a guy that won't pull punches, that will tell you exactly what he thinks, then this is the guy. Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Ray, how you doing? I'm, All is well. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Listen, I had to talk to you about this. This thing has hit the boiling point. You know, after eight years of throwing law enforcement under the bus, separating the races, you know, I had a caller just a moment ago, Reverend, uh, something about the government. And I said, look, there's no vested interest. There's no upside in the government trying to bring the races together. We're easier to manipulate for them if we're divided. True or false? 100% true. The government don't want us united as one because if we were united as one, we would have a better go- uh, government. They wouldn't be as corrupt. They wouldn't be controlling us in the manner that they are. So they definitely don't want us united. Look what the government has done to <clears throat> not all but most black people for the last 60 years or so. They have uh, brainwashed, dumbed down, and manipulated, demoralized most black people, and they did that so that they could control them generation after generation. As Linda B. Johnson said, the Democrats will control the blacks for the next 200 years. You know, I've got a piece on the website, The History of Democrats, Republicans, and Racism uh, Post-Civil War. You know, a lot of people don't even realize that the Democrats created, uh, the Southern Democrats created the KKK to harass freed black men and what they called radical Republicans at the time. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, when, when LBJ signed that civil rights bill in 65, in his own autobiography, you know, he was touted as, oh, he's a savior to the black community. What did he say? He said, I'll have those N-words voting yeah. for uh, Democrats for the next 200 years. And lo and behold, he was absolutely right. Even today, you have up to 96 to 98 percent of black people uh, voting for the Democratic Party. We saw it twice with Barack Obama. We just saw it down in Alabama when uh, a good man like Judge Roy Moore ran against a a, uh, weak Democrat who support illegal aliens and abortion and everything else. The blacks, they went out and they voted him in. And not because he was a good man, but because he was a liberal Democrat with no moral values. And if you notice, Rick, not all, not all, but most black people don't support men and women of values. If you love God, if you love your country, if you love the family, if you uh, 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 believe in putting the country first, they're not going to vote for you. But if you're a morally bankrupt uh, liar, if you... Uh, someone that cannot be respected, and you're going to give them free stuff, they will vote for you. Uh, a lot of people, uh, Reverend, they don't uh, they don't really know where you came from. I, I've tried to explain Bond, the Brotherhood <laughs> Organization of a New Destiny, um, and what that was about, what you were able to accomplish. Um, you've got uh, another uh, a site now uh, that I just gave as I introduced you, which uh, which I think people ought to go to, rebuildingtheman.com. Tell people where you were and where you are now. Long story short, I grew up in Alabama. I grew up on a plantation down in Alabama. I grew up under the Jim Crow laws. I was taken out of school twice a year once to plant the crop, and, uh, and the next time to bring the crops in, harvest the crops. 
I, uh, 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 my mother and father didn't get married, but my mother married my stepfather before I was born because during those days, it was an embarrassment to have children out of wetlock, and she didn't want to have a baby out of wetlock, so she married my stepfather. So I didn't grow up with my father. I had a yearning for my father growing up. My mother tried to turn me away from him whenever I would ask for him or about him. And then, um, and, um, so I had that void in me. I moved to L.A. at 18. I asked God to let me see what was going on with me, and he allowed me to see that I had this anger against my parents. And once that happened, I forgave them. I went to them and forgave them. My mother for tried to turn me away because the worst thing that can happen to children, no matter boy or girl, no matter what the color is, when you turn them away from their fathers, you turn them away from God, and it leaves an emptiness and they grow up looking for uh, other things to fulfill that void, and they end up destroying them. But I forgave my parents, and what I did, God forgave me. He took that void away, and I started Bond, the Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny, and we are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man, turning men back toward their parents, telling them to forgive their father and mother. And when they do, Rick, God forgive them. We, we tutor, we counsel we have an entrepreneur academy now where we're teaching these boys how to start businesses ages 15 and up. We started a credit union so we can loan them the money, and they pay back the money with interest so we can keep it going. We have not gotten one dime from the government, not one penny, because I believe the less government in your life, the better off you are. It's people helping us to help others. We've been around this past February for 28 years. <laughs> can you believe that? I know. Isn't that amazing? That is. it, and one other quick point about that, there, I have proven in my book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood, that there is no such thing as racism. It has never existed. It was a lie that was made up by the children of the lie in order to manipulate and control people so that they could get power and wealth. And the children of the lie, the so-called civil rights leaders, the black preachers, the politicians, and the liberal media, I'm about as a spiritual battle, a warfare between good and evil, right versus wrong. And most black men and women hate their mothers, and they're yearning for their fathers. It's not the white person or white people that's the problem. They have not forgiven their mothers for turning them away from their fathers. All right. I, I've got to step aside very quickly. When we come back... Um, I said this in my promo uh, before you came on. What do the shooters in, at Columbine, Sandy Hook, of course, Florida, uh, so many more, what do they have in common? Uh, look at their background. Look at the yeah. relationships. Let's talk a little bit about that. But before I step aside, my favorite saying of all time, and this goes back about 20 years. I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, there was a point in time when you and I probably wouldn't have been friends. Uh, but that all changed when you realized that uh, white people weren't getting up in the morning, going to the breakfast table, and what? Uh, uh, trying to figure out how they going to keep the Negroes down today. Pass me the salt, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson is my guest. 12 minutes after the hour. Your calls straight ahead. All right, 17 minutes after the hour. Uh, with me is Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson. You see him on Fox and uh, Newsmax, just all over the place. His site is rebuildingtheman.com, his latest book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. All right, let's get to it, Reverend. Um, you know, you look at all the school shootings, you know, Columbine. I remember interviewing one of the kids um, that same day, Columbine, Sandy Hook, and Florida, and there's so many others. Um, but there seems to be a common thread. Uh, it's not necessarily uh, that they were bullied. You know, we talk a lot, well, it's guns, what kind of gun. It's not even really about that. It's a human issue. What do all these things have in common as far as the background? And, and you're right. It's not about guns at all. It's about bad parenting. These boys and girls are growing up with, with either one parent in the home, and most of the time it's the mother, or no parents at all. And, and they're angry about that because they didn't grow up with love. They didn't grow up with a sense of direction in life. They don't know how to handle the issues and challenges that life brings. But when you look at the parenting, and most of the time the fathers are not around, and when you look at their background, 
they all have that in common so far. And so unless we deal with those issues, you could take every gun away from every citizen of this great nation, and you still going to have violence happening because it's not the – the physical thing is the heart of the person. And if we don't turn the uh, parents back to the children and children back to the parents, it's going to only get worse Rick, and not get better. You know, I, I put something on the website, uh, hashtag put God and prayer back in schools. Yes. Um, you know, the idea was the country w- was founded on biblical principles, whether you're a Jew or a Hindu or a mo- whatever. Uh, biblical principles work for everyone. Yes. Um, and, you know, I, I went to a website, national website, and they had a couple hundred people said, oh, I agree. I said, I can't believe that that few of people, that just those few people care about yeah. this. I put it up on my website. We had over 70,000 hits in a week. Um, yeah. You know, people care about this, but what about the school shootings, uh, Jesse? If 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 the, the president or anyone else would come to you and said, Reverend Peterson, you know, how do we get a handle on this from this point forward? What would you say? The first thing I would recommend is that we be sh- make sure that teachers are armed in the schools, especially those who don't mind being armed, because when uh, potential villains know that. There are guns in the schools or in your homes, in your communities. They are less uh, apt to go in and attack you. But if they know it's a uh, school, a gun-free school, it's just going to get worse. There's nothing to stop them from going in there. And then I will focus, there needs to be a major, major nationwide focus on families. We need to get the families back in order we also need, as you mentioned, we need to put God back into the public square, back into the public schools, back into the government, back into the homes, and back into the churches. You might be surprised at the number of preachers who don't really promote God and goodness, and they don't tell the truth about what's happening in the homes. And so as a result, it's just going out of control. I have to tell you, Rick, when you don't have God guiding your life, even in your personal life, your life will go out of control. And likewise, when you take him out of the public square, it goes out of control. And that's what's happening right now. Uh, you know, to to make an analogy, um, President Bush advised uh, then President uh, Obama, don't pull out. Don't pull out of Iraq. You're going to create a vacuum yes. that's going to be filled with something even more evil, and we'll have to go back and finish the job. And that's exactly what happened with ISIS. Well, from my way of thinking, when you pull God out of anywhere, you create a vacuum that's usually going to be filled with something you don't like very much. And yes, right. I, how much further down this road do we have to go before somebody wakes up? It's amazing to see this happen over and over and over again. When we saw the shooter down in Florida, the first thing the children of the lie did, and the children of the lie are the liberal media, the Democratic representatives, the right old Republican, and the Neville Trumpers. They went after the guns. That's so crazy to me. How you? There were no guns in the school. That's why the, the boy was able to go in there and shoot up the people. Rather than looking at that uh, boy's background, he grew up with uh, adopted parents. His f- adopted father died when he was very young. His adopted mother died. And apparently he had to go and find a place to live uh, with a friend of his uh, and his parents. And that's no way for a kid to grow up. And instead of focusing on that, and then the school and other people knew about it, and no one did anything to help the boy deal with what he was dealing with. And so instead of being honest about that, they're blaming it on the guns and that's what the children of the lie do. They turn everything into politics because they are about power and wealth. They're not about the people. They're not about what is right. They're about power and wealth, and they try to get us all emotional lies by showing the incident over and over and over again and then showing the children who are walking out of the school like we're not going to recognize that those children have been ba- uh, paid and bought for by the liberals who want to take away our rights to bear arms. Uh, finally, uh, Reverend Peterson, uh, first of all, thanks for, for coming on. I appreciate that. You know that. Oh, oh by, yeah. the way, by the way, I read your uh, – I read it – I very seldom, as you know, read from a prepared text. But I read the audience, the final solution for Farrakhan just before you came on. Oh. Oh, man. Great. Thank you. <laughs> I got to tell you, 
Um, you know, you and I have, I don't know, we've been friends for, what, 20 years, maybe longer. Well, I have or had a day. <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask you, you know, with, uh, I think in the wake of the eight years with Obama, and then, of course, uh, Trump, and I don't always agree with the way he does things, but, you know, I think uh, I think we got a different direction going. There I is call no... him the great white hope. Did you know that? Yeah, I heard that. I heard that, as a matter of fact. <laughs> when it comes to the black-white issue, how are we going to take care of this? I mean, I don't ever remember. Of course, I wasn't alive during the civil rights things, but right. um, I mean, how are we going to get a handle on this? I mean, with Black Lives Matter and all these other organizations, you know, if we're left alone, the black and white community left alone, we generally get along pretty good. But you inject yes. politics into it, then all of a sudden we've got division. How do we get a handle on the black white dilemma we've got in this country? The first thing we have to do, without a doubt, is we got to tell them the truth. We have to be not be afraid to tell black people the truth. And, you know, most blacks are very, and, and they seem like nice people, and they are, but niceness is not righteousness. And there's some angry, mean, out-of-control people. Most black people don't believe in God. Even though they go to church, they believe about him. And so they're believing in this lie that racism is holding them back, and it's not. And the politicians and the media pushes that on them all the time, and they believe it because they're angry. And when you're angry, Satan is your father, so it's easy to believe a lie. But we got to tell them the truth. And then at some point, the government got to make them take care of themselves instead of, uh, you know, the working class taking care of these out of wedlock babies and make the black men and women take responsibility because they're not going to appreciate individuality and self-reliance until they have to take care of themselves. But most of all, white people got to get over the fear of telling black people the truth. And the truth is, it's not about racism. It's about the lack of moral character, the destruction of their families, and they have been brainwashed and controlled by the Democratic Party and the liberal media. Uh, yeah, man, I wish we had more time. We, we got to talk again soon because I want, I want to get deeper into this. I, I don't know. You, you know I've been doing this for 25 yeah. years. Um, but never in that whole length of time had I have I had such a sense of urgency to try to get to some really solid, useful answers. And I think you can help me with that. I'll be happy to. I know I can. We've been working together a long time. We <laughs> both know what the problem is. We need to get it out there. Uh, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson uh, has been my guest. Um, if uh, if you don't know anything about him or Bond or RebuildingTheMan.com, uh, please go there. RebuildingTheMan.com, the latest book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. I know you got a show to do, Reverend, so uh, have a good one. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate you, man. All right. Take care. 326 the time. Your call straight ahead.